Hello everybody, welcome to our AP Stats Review. We're doing um, the practice examination number two, so hopefully this will work out good for you guys here. I'm in the dark, as you can see, it's not too dark yet, but it will be later. Um, okay, so this is our test here. And our first problem up, number one, we're just gonna do one through five here to make it quick, as quick as I can. All right, when I look at the scatter plot, we're gonna come down here and pick the appropriate equation. Remember that constant is your y-intercept, and right below constant always is your slope. They put explanatory, it'll be your slope. Okay, and then your r squared, we don't use the adjusted to use that. And in order to find r, I'm, that's r squared, I'll square root those values to find the actual value of r. Okay, so when I look at this picture here, the y-intercept looks like it's around close to 10, somewhere up there, nine something maybe, 10. Positive though. Okay, and that will eliminate some values. And then I know the slope is negative, so in my explanatory, it has to be a, value, a negative value. So when I do this here, okay, our y-intercept is positive 9.1. That looks good, 9.1, 9.1, uh, 9.1, negative 0.61. E is out right there. Okay, and now when I look at the uh, slope, the slope should be a negative value, it's going downhill, okay, so A is out because it's positive, B looks good still, C is out because it's positive, D looks good, E is already gone, and then when I square out those values, we'll see in a second here, okay, so again the y-intercept is positive, that eliminated E. Uh, slope is negative, that get, got rid of A and C, so my choices left are D and E, and the um, R squared values are, for D is 0.679 and 0.461. When I square root those, I get 0.679 and 0 0.82. 0 0.82 would be strong correlation, I would say that's moderate, so that means 0.679 is the correct choice, and that choice is choice E. Okay, so that's number one. Uh, number two, I feel like number two is, is difficult, all right? So listen, on ones that are difficult, like don't feel bad that you don't get it or something. This is a hard one. Um, okay, so here's what we have. A magazine claims 25.1% women enjoy gardening. Okay, that would mean I have no hypothesis, okay? The researcher believes that the percentage of gardening women is higher, so the proportion is greater than 0.251. They have a random sample of 100 women, okay, and it yields significant results at the 0.05 level, okay? So let's watch how this works right now. Significant results, we're thinking it's higher, so that would be a one-tailed test. Significant results would mean that my results were out there on the end. Okay, and here they're talking about confidence intervals. So I'm gonna to go to my um, smart board here. Let's go to problem number two. Okay, so our null is that the proportion of gardening women is 0.251. The alternative is that it's greater than 0.251. Okay, and they got significant results. Okay, that means that if, here's my picture, the results ended up out there. Okay, they were, they were far greater than the 0.251. Okay, now, this is 5%, that's your alpha level out there, okay? And for a confidence interval, to have that same cutoff, that would be 5%. There'd be 5% on the other side as well, so it would be a 90% confidence interval that, that would like agree with, okay? And since 0.251 was not an acceptable value, it was too far out to be plausible, okay? That meant that my confidence interval, okay, wherever it was, okay, it would be out here and 0.251 would be too low because we found the real results, again, the actual results we got when we did our experiment, they didn't tell you, but they are larger, they're too large, they're out there far to the right. Okay, so the real values are out here, and we found a confidence interval, it would be there. It would not contain 2.51, because it would agree with the test, if that makes sense. Okay, and 
that would mean that 0.251, oh, I put these backwards, this should be the lower edge of the interval, and this would be the upper. Okay, in order for my, my findings to agree with one another, then 0.251 would not be a plausible answer, meaning it wouldn't be in the interval. So wherever the interval is here, 0.251 would be below the lower bound of the interval, and that was choice D, okay? That's a very challenging one, so be patient with that one. It's not a typical question. Okay, let's go to three on our problem here, okay? All right, this, this also has a little bit of an unusual thing, which I don't really like throwing that in there for you guys. It should be just a normal problem when you're starting out, okay? Um, so this is the problem here. There's stuff going on. They want to determine the number of CDs, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what size of sample would they need to, to take to estimate this number with a margin of error of 0.5 and a 95% confidence if they assume the standard deviation is three? Okay, so what we're doing is we normally do sample size with the proportion, all right? But they're giving you a mean problem, all right? And that's not very good because we don't actually do that super accurately here. Okay, so normally the margin of error for the sample size is your z times square root of pq over n, but now I got a mean problem. It really should be a t there, okay? But we don't know the degrees of freedom because we're looking for n. We just use a z value, all right? And our standard deviation or standard error instead of that is going to become the standard deviation over the square root of n, okay? I see that you can't see that probably when I have my hand up there, but I think you can now. All right, so here's my math, and I, I got this wrong the first time I did it because I assumed it was 0.05, but the margin of error is 0.5, that'd be huge. Okay, but that's 0.5 right there, okay, and it equals 1.96, that's your um, z-score, which we'll use in this problem, times three over square root of n. I'm gonna multiply by square root of n to each side, divide by 0.5, and then finally I'll square that to get that, and you get an answer very near 139, making that the correct choice and I believe that's E if I did that one right on that problem. Okay, so that's kind of a curveball. You really don't almost ever see those. You'll see the proportion problem, which I've shown you in class, are much more common. Okay, number four. Moving along. Okay, all right, this one. Um, this is pretty typical, actually. So here's this student, and he wants to find the interval for, he wants to find the difference in the average age of students and faculty, okay? So he could do a confidence interval to do that, but the trick here is that it says he is able to record all, the age of all fac faculty members and all students, okay? So what happens then, he's got all the values. He doesn't need to guess or approximate what it is. He could just calculate it, okay? So. On this particular one, let's see. Let's see here. He doesn't need to do any statistics. He calculated the entire thing. Let's find that one down here. Oh, sorry, taking a long time. D, right there. The student had data for the entire population, therefore the actual difference can be commuted, and a confidence interval is not valid. You don't need to guess that it's between here and here. You can find the exact value, okay? So watch out for that. When there's a census, there's a census taken, a true census measuring everybody, there's no need for statistics to approximate it when you know the exact value, okay? Last one, number five, moving along. Okay, randomly selected individual asked about physical activity. 30 of the 75 men had walked. Okay, and 36 of the women had walked. And it says assume independence between the samples. That means we can um, do our statistics on it. Okay, and it asks, is there evidence to show a significant difference in the proportion of men and, who, and women who walk for exercise? So we would just do a two proportion Z test. So let's go over to our other problem here. This is number four, we talked about that already. All right, we'd conduct a two proportion Z test. The women, here's the facts for them and the men. Okay, our null would be that there's no difference between the women minus the men. Notice the women are first, because they have a higher value, okay? And be careful, because it doesn't say that the women are higher, it asks if there's a difference, so that would be not equal to, okay? 
And if you go do a two proportion Z test, put in the women, 36 out of 75, and the men, 30 out of 75, at a 95% level, I believe it was, you'll get a p-value of 0.324. Okay, what does that mean? That's high. Okay, so that means we would fail to reject this and we would still be there. We did not find significant findings. Let's go back to our problem here. Okay, and that choice, excuse me, I can find it quicker over here if I have it. I guess I didn't write it down. Okay, so, oh, here it is right here. With the p-value of 0.324, there's insufficient evidence to show a significant difference in the portion of men and women who walk for exercise. So that is number five. Okay, thank you guys. I'll be back.